Today we're going to be going over the ladder start tier list for max roll. There'll be a link for this in the description below. As a disclaimer, this ladder start tier list is pretty much the exact same thing as it was in season one. And that is because we're not considering Sunder Charms or Terror Zones for this tier list because we're not really calling those starter. What are we considering for this tier list? We are considering builds that perform well with limited gear. They can also farm key areas such as Eldritch, Pindle, and Daryl and Mephisto, which are really good for building economy upon a ladder start. And as I said before, just to make sure we reiterate this, the Sunder, Charms, and Terror Zones are not considered for the tier list. At the very top, you can filter all these builds for yourself if you want, but we're gonna jump in class by class. So we're gonna start off by looking at the Sorceress and remember that this is the best class when we're actually gonna be starting a ladder. It has Teleport at level 18, Static Field at level six, with Telekinesis at level six as well. Then you have Cold Mastery, which scales you into the end game and that is just going to be really, really powerful, especially with these Sunder Charms coming inside the Terror Zones, this ladder. So as I said before, Blizzard Sorceress, easily the best starter. It's always been a very good starter. Actually, it's always been the best starter, but this season, even more so. The Hydra Sorceress is really good at farming Mephisto and Indariel. You can do it also at a very safe range. Fireball Meteor kind of melts in Daryl faster than any other build just due to the raw fire damage and Daryl has low fire res. Meteor Orb is really good because you can farm pretty much any area, cold damage for when you need it and fire damage for other scenarios. Frozen Orb is a very strong build because it only costs like 40 to 60 points depending on how many points you put in to cold mastery and then you can put the rest of your points in an energy shield making you very tanky. Firewall deals a lot of damage, however, you do need the monsters to kind of stay still or stay on your fire. You have to be really good at kiting them in order to deal your damage well. Lightning does require a lot of plus skills in order to start popping off, but it's okay for key farming in the very early stages, which can also get you a lot of currency in the ladder. Kind of the same thing for the Nova Sork, you need a lot of plus skills to start doing damage, but you can hybrid out either using energy shield, Hydra or Frozen Orb. Then you can also play the Enchant Sorceress if that's something you really want to do to help support your team. Maybe you have a group of melee characters that you're trying to support. That is an option as well. Now for the Paladin, starting off, there's pretty much no better start for ladder than Fist of the Heavens. That's because you not only do magic damage and you can farm places like the Pit and stuff, but you can also have a free aura. So if you're playing with a bunch of sorceresses, which I'm guessing this ladder is going to have a crap ton of, you can just run Conviction. Blessed Hammer is also very strong as well, just due to its magic damage that it deals, but it does require that aura, which doesn't give it as much flexibility as the Fist of Heavens. Smite is easily the best starter for killing ubers your first time. It's super smooth, super easy to do. Again, you can just click on the builds here and be able to check them out if that's something you want to look into and see what the build guide is all about. The Holy Fire Paladin you can start with and play through the game, but as you get farther and farther along closer to hell, a lot of monsters start having that fire immunity and unless you pair yourself with say another friend that's using conviction aura or something lower resist from a necro or whatever it's going to be a little bit difficult to continue on and zeal just is really gear reliant any physical build pretty much needs a lot of gear in order to start popping off and do well with the necromancer we have three builds listed here and that is summon necromancer which is probably one of the best ones to start with you can do the whole game naked which is fantastic but it does struggle a little bit through normal and you need levels to be able to start doing your damage. And then you have curse support as well. The Bone Spear Necromancer is magic damage, so almost nothing stops you. It just takes a little bit of time because the magic damage from this source is a bit weak. And then Poison is in D because you do need that minus enemy poison resist to start doing a lot of damage. So Death's Web, you know, I won't say it's required, but it's definitely going to increase your damage. For the druid, I would say easily the best one to start off with is play in a support role using Shockwave. Apparently Shockwave this season can be very good damage combined with the new Sunder Charms. 
it might even be able to compete with Tornado as a damage build. We'll see how that goes as time goes on, but some of us have been fooling around with that idea recently. So keep your eye out for that. I believe Macro might be looking into that one. The Tornado and Fissure Druid are super solid options as well playing through the game, just because you can easily get a Spirit and a Stealth to just get yourself rolling. The one thing to be aware of with the Fissure Druid though is that Again, fire immunes do become more prominent as you progress closer and closer to Hell Bale. As of 2.4, the Summon Druid became a thing. However, I wouldn't really recommend this build as it requires a lot of plus to skills. You can definitely play through the game and beat it slowly, but it is going to struggle. Now the same thing goes for all physical builds that require gear. Fury is F tier. Yeah, you can play it, but Fire Claws might be a little bit better than Fury, but Again, you require attack rating, you're gonna require some other things. It's kind of gear dependent. Now going over to the most gear dependent class in the game, and that is the Barbarian. Unless you are playing battle orders for your team, I really do not suggest starting off as a Barbarian for the latter. You can do it, but it is super gear dependent. The Berserk Barbarian is gear dependent, however, it is pretty strong once you get an Oath or an Unbending Will. Warcry isn't as gear dependent, but its damage is a bit lacking. However, it is pretty safe as well, so it's a nice C tier build. In the D tier, we have Double Throw, Whirlwind, and Leap Attack. And again, this is just because it's a physical build. It's a Barbarian. You require gear in order to start being able to do a any significant amount of damage. The Lightning Sentry Assassin is the best assassin that you can start a ladder off with. It isn't in A because you are competing against sorceresses that have teleport, but it does have three different types of damage. You have lightning, of course, then you have fire and physical from the death sentry with a bunch of crowd control coming from mind blast and cloak of shadows. Wick of fire assassin being in C because it doesn't have quite as much damage, but you do have death sentry and you still have all those crowd control abilities. Phoenix Strike Assassin is F tier build, but you could probably still do a ladder because you don't have immunities. It might take you a long time to get through the game, but just because it's an F tier doesn't mean you can't play it. Now moving on to the Amazon, we have the Lightning Fury Amazon. And this is the best build that you want to go with to start off a ladder. You can farm cows, arcane, eldritch, whatever. Plague, Freezing Arrow, and Lightning are also C so they can play through the game, but they're definitely slower. Strafe is a little bit better than Multi-Shot and Jab, but they're all physical builds, so that's why they are D and F. It requires more gear to be able to start dealing damage. Well, that concludes the ladder start tier list for Max Roll. If you do enjoy the video, be sure to like it, as well as check out all the other content creators as well in the Diablo 2 scene or even the other games as well. We have a bunch of fantastic content creators that put tons of hours of work in them. Thank you all for watching. Much love. You are all beasts.